Hi, today we're going to start with talking about PMOS and PMOS logic. So PMOS, unlike NMOS, looks like this. And so in keeping with sort of the PNP transistor uh, idea, so we have a gate here, and then we have the drain is up here and the source is over here. And uh, the threshold voltage, um, no, I got this backwards, source, drain, yes. Okay, so the threshold voltage, Vt, is typically less than zero because this is a p-channel MOSFET, so everything is reversed effectively. So that means that the uh, voltage between gate and source has to be uh, greater than this threshold voltage. So, for example, if we had a MOSFET, a PMOS, that was connected up here to VDD, say, even though it's source anyway, and we have a resistor here, and we have an LED over here, so the question is, what gate voltage do we have to uh, apply to the MOSFET to turn it on and off? Well, to turn it off, um, just like with the NMOS, to turn it off, you basically connect the gate to its source so that VGS is zero. So, of course, that's greater than the threshold. Now, to turn it on, you would connect the gate to ground. And if you connect the, great, the gate to ground, then VGS, and because the polarity is plus here and minus here, that means that VGS would be minus VDD. Uh, in a lot of the equations for PMOS, you often see VSG so that you don't get the negative sign. VSG is VDD. So because VGS is less than the threshold, that will... Um, turn this on. So let's actually try this circuit. Um, so again, when the gate is ground or zero, that means that the transistor is on, which means that current will flow from VDD to through the LED. So that means that the LED is on, so that's a one. So again, this is an inverter, it's just using PMOS. And if you'll notice the difference between this and an NMOS circuit, The NMOS circuit looked like this with its um, source connected to ground. Or uh, to put it another way, the load resistor is on the top while the transistor is on the bottom. Whereas with PMOS logic, it's completely different. It's the opposite where the load resistor is at the bottom and the transistor is at the top. So let's go breadboard this. Breadboard. Um, now I have somewhere here, yes, I built this. Okay, um, this is the dual uh, PMOS circuit, dual PMOS, which is this one over here. Um, so you can see that it is uh, a six-pin package because it's got three of uh, because it's got two MOSFETs, and I have here a slightly better pinout. Okay, and the nice thing about this is that you can turn it around, and because it's completely symmetrical, it doesn't matter uh, which way you you flip it around. Um, so I've got my PMOS is here, so I'm just going to whack that in. And let me go grab the circuit again and maybe put this underneath as well. Let's try that. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to need is the uh, LED and the resistor. So here's my LED. So the LED goes to ground and then I have a resistor and the resistor goes to um, the terminal without the arrow. Uh, so we can, let's see, okay, so this resistor is closest maybe to this 
uh, transistor over here. So I'm just going to use these upper two terminals and this lower terminal. So I connect the resistor between the LED and this terminal right over here. Okay, the gate is up here. So there's the gate. I'm going to connect it to ground for now. And let's see what else. Oh, and we have to make the connection to VDD. So I'm going to take the terminal with the arrow and connect it up to VDD. So that's this terminal right over here. Okay, so if everything is as expected, this should be an inverter, which means that if I input a zero, I should get out a one. So I'll turn on the power supply and sure enough, the LED is on. And if I connect it now to plus, the LED is off. So there you go, there's an inverter. And just like with the NMOS, we're seeing this charge effect where the gate is still charged up. And you can see that the gate actually lost its charge. Look at that. That's kind of interesting. So the charge actually leaked away. Um, okay, so there it is. There is the inverter. And of course, you know, just very similarly, you can make all the different gates because once you have an inverter, um, you can put two of these together. Well, let's actually draw that out, maybe actually build it. So suppose we have, here is, turn off the power supply. So here's gate one and here is gate two, and here is our output. Okay, so clearly only when both transistors are on is the LED going to light. The way to turn the, the transistors on is to connect their gates to ground. So zero, zero, one. If any one of these is off, in other words, if any one of the gates is connected to VDD, then the LED is going to be off off, 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 and again, we get our, um, in this case, we have a NOR, okay? So that's interesting because whereas um, when we had the NMOS circuit with two transistors in parallel, and there's our load, this was an AND gate, a NAND gate. When you use parallel PMOS transistors, that gives you a NOR gate. And likewise, when you parallel PMOS transistors, that will give you the NAND gate. So in effect, when you're going from NMOS to PMOS, a series set of NMOS transistors is equivalent to a parallel set of PMOS transistors. Let me just draw out the parallel PMOS just to show that this is actually true. There's one gate. There's the other gate, gate one, gate two. There's the output. So again, gate one, gate two, output. So how do we turn this transistor on? Uh, how do we turn the LED on? Well, one of the transistors has to be on. Um, the transistor is on when the gate is grounded. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, <laughs> 1, 0, 1, 1. So if any one of the gates is grounded, that means that any one of the transistors is on, right? And that means that this is the only condition where the LED is going to be off is when both transistors are off. And that's, of course, an AND gate. So you can see that series NMOS transistors, when you go to PMOS, become parallel PMOS transistors. And the opposite is true, that when you have parallel NMOS transistors, you end up with series PMOS transistors. And this is going to be important because uh, we're going to look at CMOS logic next. That's complementary MOS, which means that it uses both NMOS and PMOS. So why would we use both NMOS and PMOS? Well, the basic problem is that, first of all, um, when you have, let's just go back to NMOS for a moment. Oops, here is 
the thing, VDD, here is our LED, or it can be, you know, going to another part of the circuit. Well, when you fabricate an integrated circuit, resistors are really huge. Um, basically, uh, in a, an integrated circuit, um, you've got uh, choices between um, types of wires that you use. Um, and a wire can be made out of metal, or it can be made out of diffused uh, uh, silicon and diffusion is also used to make transistors but if you just have you know a long um, a long trace of basically diffused silicon that also acts as a wire you've also got the possibility of polysilicon that's another um, conductor so in any case um, in order to make a resistor basically you need to make long lengths of these and you know maybe in integrated circuits you might see something that looks like this you know, and it goes around and, you know, maybe it even goes around over here. And the reason that they do that is to make a resistor. But you can see that that takes a lot of area. Whereas making a uh, transistor only requires having a small trace of diffusion and then an insulator going to a gate. And that's a MOSFET. So... Um, because the area is so large, you can actually create a transistor instead of a resistor. And you specifically, for NMOS uh, circuits, you would create an NMOS that is connected to VDD. Remember, this is going to be like the resistor. And here's our other NMOS going to ground. And here is the output. So this is going to be an inverter. So the question is, well, what do we do with this gate? And in fact, what you do is you connect its gate to its source. And you might be saying, well, wait a minute, that turns the transistor completely off because the voltage, because the, the VGS over here is definitely less than the threshold voltage. Well, that's why you use a special, it's called a depletion mode. MOSFET, and a depletion mode MOSFET is um, specifically for, we're talking about NMOS, where its threshold is actually less than zero. So in other words, with this connection, VGS is zero, and it is greater than the threshold voltage, which means that for this depletion mode NMOS, this is actually on. And when it is connected like this, it basically acts like a resistor, except, of course, it takes up a lot less area. So, for example, here is the diffusion. Here is our insulator, say, over here. And say this is connected to VDD right over here. And this terminal over here is the source, but it is connected to its gate. So you might see something like that with kind of a little hook over here. And then this goes off to the rest of the circuit. So this is really small as opposed to, you know, that crazy little zigzag sort of thing. So uh, that, uh, that is how in purely NMOS circuits you uh, fabricate resistors in an integrated circuit. Now, I don't have any depletion mode MOSFETs, so we can't really experiment with this, and I don't really want to. So let's talk about CMOS, or complementary MOS. Now, one of the problems with a circuit like this, this is our inverter circuit with this uh, depletion load, um, is that when this transistor is on, connecting the output to ground, there is current flowing from positive to negative through this resistor effectively. Now the other thing, the other problem with that is that not only is there current flowing through when this transistor is on, but also because the output typically goes to another MOSFET, there's basically a capacitor here. This is the gate capacitance. So when you want to, um, when you want to connect this gate to VDD, well, it's going to have to do so uh, through a resistor and a capacitor, which means that you have a time constant so that instead of a nice sharp um, or relatively sharp waveform like that, the waveform is going to take a little while.
to go up to VDD. Now you could solve that, I suppose, by putting a very small resistor over here, but of course that still doesn't get around the first problem, which is where if this bottom transistor is on, then it's shorted to ground, and that means that you've got a very small resistor between your power supply and your positive power supply and ground. That means that you're going to get a huge amount of current, and if you've got, say, a square wave going through here, that means that you've got a huge amount of current going through half the time, which is A, a waste of power, and B, because it's going to be so much current, because you wanted this time constant to be so small, um, you're going to waste a lot of power in this MOSFET, and the MOSFET could blow up. So, what if we could create a circuit where there's nothing connected to VDD when this transistor is on, and in a complementary sense, when this transistor is off, there will be nothing connected here, and there will be uh, something connecting VDD to the output. And the answer is CMOS. Here's CMOS. So what I've done is I've drawn a PMOS transistor up here and an NMOS transistor down here, and they serve complementary functions. Their gates are connected, so let's see what happens when the gate is connected to ground. Well, if the gate is connected to ground, then the bottom transistor is definitely off, and the top transistor is on, which means that we will have a connection between VDD going through the resistor and the LED. So when the gate is at ground, the output is at 1. Now, if the gate is connected to plus, that means that the bottom transistor is on, but the top transistor is off, which means that this is purely connected to ground, but there's no current flowing through. So the gate is 1 and the output is 0. So again, this is an inverter, except you can see that in neither state will there be current uh, flowing through this bottom transistor. Now, of course, we've got current flowing through the top transistor because, in effect, this is an output transistor. So it goes to something that actually demands current. But if this were to go to another MOSFET, well then, the only current that would flow is the current required to turn on or, or to charge up the gate, and then of course the gate is, on, is charged, and then no more current will flow. So that means that you will only be, um, be passing current through these MOSFETs in the small transition between states. So for example, if we had the gate going like this, say, then the current would look something like this. Okay? And this is, you know, maybe current going through the top MOSFET and current going through the bottom MOSFET. So this is to charge up the, the gate of the next stage, and this is to um, discharge the gate on the next stage. With NMOS, okay, so if this is the gate, here we have the, the um, here we have the LED is going to be on, and here we have the LED is going to be off. Well, if the LED is on, then if the if the LED is off, so we have the gate being high, that means that, and again, let me just draw the circuit over here, right? So if the LED is off, that means this transistor is on, which means that there's current flowing through from plus to minus, which means that when it's on, the current through the MOSFET is also something like that. So you can see that uh, the amount of power used by CMOS is a lot less than the amount of power used by NMOS. So let's actually build this circuit and see what happens. So I've got my breadboard over here. Um, I already have the NMOS hooked up, so now let me go get the PMOS. This is the, this is the PMOS right over here. So I'm going to hook that up. Yep, new breadboard. Go ahead and open up the leaves. Okay, so. All right. And I also have these two pinouts. Okay, so 
Let's see what we need first. Okay, so first what we need is to um, pull everything off. Okay, so we are going to want to take the NMOS and connect it um, kind of like we did before, except that this resistor doesn't go to plus. It goes now between the output and the um, LED. So I'm going to take the LED and I'm going to put it, um, say, in between. Okay, so I'm going to use, say, this uh, transistor over here as the NMOS, which means that uh, this leftmost terminal needs to be connected to ground. So I'll do that. Okay, the gate, first of all, is going to be our input. And second of all, the gate must also be connected to the gate of one of the PMOSs. And I'll use this uh, these two terminals over here. So I need to connect to the middle terminal over there. All right, so that's our gate. I'll connect it to ground. All right, and now what do we need to do? Well, we need to take the uh, resistor and connect it between the LED and, um, first of all, the drain of NMOS. So this is the drain of NMOS right here. I'm going to connect this resistor up here and then use a, I'll just use a wire to connect it to the LED. Actually, you know what? What I'll do is I'll connect the top rail to ground. Oops. I'll connect the top rail to ground. There. Now I have ground available at the top. So I'll take my resistor and connect it to ground through that resistor. Okay. And let me see what's next. Okay, now I need to connect the, uh, the drain of PMOS to VDD. So I'll use a wire for that. So here's the PMOS. Here is the drain. I'll connect that to plus. And let's see, the gate's connected. And finally, I need to connect the output. Oh. Well, what I can do is I could just move this over and first of all do that. Okay, yeah, that, that, that's not going to work. Okay, I messed that up. Sorry. My bad. Um, so I'm going to take a wire and connect the sources of these. So there's the source of the NMOS. And here's the source of the PMOS. And then I'm going to take the resistor and connect that there and the LED to ground. Great. All right, so this wire is the connection between uh, the two gates. This wire is the connection between the two gates, and this is my input right here. Uh, I don't need that ground wire anymore. This yellow wire is the connection between the two uh, sources, and I have the resistor and the LED going in series to ground. And finally, I have the drain of, or yeah, sorry, the source. <laughs> okay, so the, the two drains are connected over here. Um, the source of the PMOS connected to plus and the source of the NMOS connected to minus. So let's fire this up now because this is an inverter. Um, so I'm connected to ground, which means that I expect the LED to light up, and it is. And now if I connect it to plus, the LED is off. So that works great. Now one of the disadvantages of a circuit like this is that um, it's all right, it's all well and good if the ground, if the gate is going to be connected to either ground or VDD. 
because then one of the two transistors is definitely off. The problem is, what happens if the gate is somewhere in between? Well, if it's somewhere in between, like say, half of VDD, well, then definitely the bottom transistor is on, and also definitely the top transistor is on, and usually the, the on resistance of these uh, transistors is very low. So you're going to have a very low resistance uh, between the two, uh, between positive and negative, and that's really no good because then you're going to get a huge amount of current flowing. So in fact, if we look at our current diagram, what's good is if you have a nice sharp transition like this. What's bad is if you have a transition like this. Because now, all of a sudden, you're going to have a huge amount of current flowing through here until the, both transistors turn off, or one, of, one or the other transistor turns off. And again, the same thing over here. So that's why you don't want to run CMOS with these low rise and fall times. You want to have very sharp rise and fall times. So one experiment I suppose that I could do, it, well, which I don't really want to do, is connect the gate up to, um, I've got five volts over here, connect the gate up to two and a half volts. But if I do that, then basically I will be uh, blowing apart my MOSFETs. Why? Well, let's take a look at the typical on resistance of, what is this, the N channel? Okay. So let's go find the on resistance at VGS is say 4.5, fine, whatever. It says four ohms, okay? So that means that this transistor here would be four ohms. And if we look at the PMOS, which I have over here, here's the PMOS, you can see that the RDS on is 1.2 ohms. Doesn't say what the VGS is, but let's just take that as given. 1.2 ohms. So I've got 5.2 ohms across here. Now, let's call that 5 ohms, which is convenient because VDD is also 5 volts. So of course, 5 volts through a 5 ohm resistor is 1 amp. Can these transistors take 1 amp? No, they cannot. This one can only take 390 milliamps, that's the posit, that's the PMOS, and the NMOS can only take 300 milliamps, which means that if I really were to connect this gate to two and a half volts, then I would blow apart my MOSFETs. And I'm not really willing to do that because I went through the effort of uh, mounting this package onto two nice breakout boards, and I've also got two MOSFETs in each package. So I'd basically be wasting a lot of uh, time and effort and money. So I'm not going to do that. Sorry. Um, okay, so that's pretty much a CMOS inverter. Now, let's talk about a CMOS NAND gate. Okay, so here is my previous diagram of the NAND gate. So you can see that we've got two NMOS transistors in series. So, two NMOS transistors in series. And there's our output. Now, remember, I showed that um, the opposite of an NMOS um, series is PMOS parallel. So this, in effect, is the opposite circuit, VDD. And now, of course, we need to connect um, the gate of each pair together like that. So there's gate one and there's gate two, and there's the output, which we will connect to an LED. Okay, so this is a complementary NAND gate. So the idea here is that um, if 
both of these transistors are on. And again, the only way for both of these transistors to be on is for both gates to be at plus. So if both of these transistors are on and the both gates are at plus, then that means that both of these transistors are off. So you can see that when all of these transistors are on, all of these transistors are off. Now, when one of these transistors is off, or both, then there's no current flowing through here. So that means that the bottom circuit is off, which means that in the complementary sense, the top circuit needs to be on, which is true, because when any one of the gates is grounded, one of these is off, one of these is on, and current is going to flow. So basically, the top part is the opposite of the bottom part, and that's the NAND gate. So we can go and build this, and because there are so many connections over here, I'm going to um, stop and then present the final circuit. And here's the final circuit. Um, I'm not going to bother going through this rat's nest of wires, but basically it's hooked up exactly like this. So um, I have connected these two wires, these are the gates, and I've connected them both to ground. So of course, um, only if both uh, wires are connected to plus will the output be off. So I expect the LED to be on, and sure enough it is. And if I move one of these connectors to plus, of course, the LED is still on. And if I move the other connection to plus, the LED goes off, which is as expected. And then if I move this back, ah, there's that little charge effect going on. On, off. So this is definitely a NAND gate. So, and of course, I had to use both of my packages here. So two, MOS, two NMOS, two PMOS, and that's a CMOS um, AND gate. And the nice thing is that this uses no power in either mode, with the exception of you know, any output. But again, if this were to go to another stage, then once that uh, stage's gates are charged up, no current is being used up at all in any state, which is great. So that's CMOS. Um, I think that's uh, probably um, most of what I wanted to go over for the MOSFET series. Um, I may talk a little bit about my findings in reverse engineering some integrated circuits through their die photos and what I found in terms of MOS circuits like this. Um, and maybe I'll talk about that. Um, but I guess until then, uh, until the next video, I'll see you. Bye.